You may know this pastor from one of our videos where he tried to convert a Muslim lady to Christianity. And this time, he tries his tricks with an imam of a masjid. When you come and have a conversation with a Muslim or Muslims who actually practice the religion. Okay. So when you start saying things that, you know, I heard this and I saw this and I saw this, doc listen. You have to be like a lawyer. You got to document all of your findings, mm -hmm. and then when you document all of your findings, then you come. I mean, this this and make the interview. This, this is like one of those like like, like, impromptu like universal kind of knowledge yeah. kind of thing. But Pastor Richard has many videos where he interviews Muslims, and most of the time he deals with laymen and presents them with the same old rehashed non-arguments that are the beads of the Christian rosary of fallacy. God says in Quran, you can have one or two or three or four, but you better have only one. Then he puts the condition of having a second wife. But isn't that confusing? See, God, God, God only wants us to have one God. wife. So do you believe Muhammad? Do you believe Muhammad married a six-year-old girl? No. But even random Muslim brothers in a random masjid are prepared to refute him on the spot, especially when it comes to theology. I work for God because I love him, not because I don't know if I'm going to heaven or not. So most, most, of, most of my Muslim friends, no, no, no. they work and they t I say, you're going to go to heaven? I don't know. No. If I do a bunch of good, if I do good works, because you, you said it earlier, if I work my way to heaven, I can potentially make it. Correct. That is fear, confusion, deception. In my religion, and it's not even a religion, in my knowing my relationship with God, he told me I'm forgiven by the blood of someone who was perfect, by out of mercy, out you of compassion. Whatever, you could live the, your life wherever you want, however, however you want, and you'll still go to heaven. That's what you're saying. No, no I follow Jesus. You follow God. You believe in Jesus. Yes, I believe. And you believe he's God. I love God. him. If you don't, you are not Muslim. But you believe he's God too. Huh? You, have a, you believe in your heart he's God. That, that's stupid. That is only with humble everyday Muslims and the pastor who claims to be filled with the Holy Spirit, couldn't even make a dent in their faith. And that is precisely why publishing the discussion raw would be detrimental to his audience. And that's why he has to add commentary filled with rehashed nonsense to stay relevant. Do you know where the word Allah comes from? It means God. It's just a myth. But, but have you studied the origins of it back to the Mecca? What do you, what do you mean? Like, have you studied the origins of, like, the word Allah? Hubal was a pagan deity worshipped in pre-Islamic Arabia, particularly among the Quraysh tribe in Mecca. Hubal was one of the chief idols housed in the Kaaba. One of the many examples of him muddying the waters and a proof that he achieved nothing in the discussion alone. Of course, every single point he brings, in addition to being regurgitated, is nonsensical and has been refuted many times. But like we said, this is only what happened with random brothers at a mosque construction site. And it gets a lot more embarrassing for Richard when he sits down with an actual imam who clearly does not play around when it comes to nonsense. And what are you going to do with this, this interview? I'll post it on our social media. Okay. And you're okay with that? Are you going to edit it? I, I we want to start with an end in mind. So how long is this... Uh... It's four, oh no, it's 3.45 right now, from your clock. How long do you usually have these things? The imam clearly set the tone and demonstrated that a masjid isn't a circus and that he doesn't deal with clowns. But the actual discussion and how unfazed he is by the regurgitated arguments are even more priceless. From what I, I've actually watched Muslim documentaries, not like Christian, and, and it's a fact that from according to Islam and history of Islam, so you tell that us he now about Islam. From so what, wait just a minute. Yeah. You come into right. a masjid, mm -hmm. you're teaching us Islam. From what I've learned. Okay, so what, what you, have to, uh, you have to do from, from Jump Street, you have to make sure that all of your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed. Okay. So when you that? come and have a conversation with a Muslim or mm -hmm. Muslims, who actually practice the religion. Okay. So when you start saying things that, you know, I heard this and I saw this and I saw this, doc listen, you have to be like a lawyer. You got to document all of your findings. Mm -hmm. And then when you document all of your findings, then you come I mean, this, this and is, make the this, interview. This is I think that you're going to turn out all right. I think God is going to bless you. Inshallah. But you've got Jesus. to listen. God, whatever you call Yahweh wait, whatever you call the creator of the heavens and earth that person you're talking about Yahweh is that you, what you're talking about 
The yeah. creator. Are you talking about the creator? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, that's what I'm talking about. You're trying to find something that will ignite your group or ignite your, your situation on your show. I want to help but people. Listen, listen, I want to help people. Listen. If you, if you want to help people, then you have to be willing to stick with the truth, the whole truth. I want to, but, but I, 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 okay. I really can't. Bring the evidence. I barely spoke during this entire interview. Well, all I'm saying is bring the evidence. Let's be honest. I barely spoke. Have a civilized conversation. Facts, bro. But not only the imam, even the attendees do not let anything fly. If that was the case, then we would be misguided. From the Torah. From, from the, the Torah, listen, that Torah is not what was revealed. By the time we got that message, you really believe that King James and all of his friends and everybody else put those remixes together, that's the same content that was revealed to Prophet Moses? Prophet Jesus, where's the gospel according to Jesus? Luke didn't even know Jesus. But, but He says that in the Bible. How was somebody who never laid eyes on Prophet Jesus? And the whole discussion can be summed up by this one line from the Imam. I want to bring this to a close. I don't want to, I really, you know, I, I don't want to waste your time and we don't want you all to waste our time. We, we appreciate you targeting us uh, for this uh, interview. Um, but I think that uh, the, I would invite you back again. Uh, but, but you got to have your facts straight, bro. Of course, and to no surprise, after achieving absolutely nothing except demonstrating the superiority and knowledge of Muslims. Richard spends one hour debriefing the discussion to make it appear like it went his way, despite the obvious. So I'm going to break down different parts of this video. I have my notes right here. But what is perhaps the most problematic part of Richard Lorenzo Jr.'s content about Islam is that, not unlike many Christians, he has no problem sharing completely fake news just because it makes Christianity look good. This example alone is a testimony of how Christians, like Richard, are desperately using every possible trick they can to make it look like Christianity is still relevant. But unfortunately for them, no amount of damage control can replace an entire civilization turning its back to their religion. May Allah guide Pastor Richard to Islam.